Yo, yo, what's up, and welcome to a Friday edition of the Opening Line, brought to you by the Elite Fantasy Sports Network. I want to give a shout-out to everybody, Elite Mafia, Goon Squad, everybody, for subscribing to the page and checking us out. Make sure you tell a friend to tell a friend. Benny, what's going on with you, my man? We come up on Friday, leading into a big sports weekend, even though not much going on today, well, as far as the NBA is concerned. But you do got some hockey, um, you do got some the Masters, and we do have some baseball tonight. Yeah, this weekend, uh, I forget, I saw it on one of the two sports books yesterday. They're running some kind of promotion because there's like six sports going on this weekend. You got soccer in the morning, you got the Masters in the morning, you got NHL, you got MLB, you got NBA, um, playoffs starting on Saturday, you got MMA fights that night. So there's a lot of things to be, a lot of sports to keep us busy this weekend, a lot of things to bet on too if we're looking, looking to get some money down. Man, that, that's, 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 it, it, it is that time of the year, you know what I'm saying? Spring break coming up and all of that good stuff. So always cool to have a couple extra dollars in the pocket. You and your crew uh, going away doing anything for spring break? No, well, I was telling you before we got on online today, you know, my kids are in three different schools because they're, they're different ages. So, like, the baby's in, a, in the pre-K, like, a program somewhere in one town, and then my one son is in another town, and then my, other, my oldest son is the only one that actually goes to school in Weehawk and where we live right now. Yeah. Weehawk. So each one of them has different spring break weeks. So like the one, my one son has a half day today, and then he's off all next week. The other one is off next week and the Monday after um, Easter. And then the third one is off the week after Easter. So even if we wanted to go away, we couldn't do anything because everybody's got different breaks. So, yeah. yeah. My daughter may uh, wake her way up here next weekend for a little spring break. My son is, is my son is, is a man. <laughs> you know, my son is like – I might be up there. I might not. <laughs> I'll let you know. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I tell you what, Benny. Senior year, you yo, you got a while before you get to senior year. Senior mm -hmm. year is expensive, bro. It is yeah. expensive. You know, you got the prom. I told you about that, and I got to pay for the girl stuff. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You got the prom. You got the dorm deposit, which I sent out this week, and all the stuff that goes along with getting ready for college. Thank God he's not traveling too far, so that won't be as bad. But um, I get a call yesterday. From the picture people. Oh, yeah. Right? So I'm like, okay, well, you know, I got, I got the email of the proofs. You know what I'm saying? What, what, you know, the proofs is there. You know what I'm saying? We'll start ordering packages shortly. And the lady was like, well, the link to the proof expires on April 24th. So I was like, so what does that mean? So she was basically like, you have until April 24th to purchase the pictures. And I'm like, you know what? <laughs> Well, you know what? I mean, not not to uh, bust your bubble, but you're also gonna have to pay for a cap and gown pretty soon too, right? I mean, that's only like a hundred bucks or so. Yep, that's yep. not too expensive, but that's still another hundred bucks. That's coming soon too. You're right about that. So all the good things that go along with that. But it's a it's a fun time. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm grad. I'm. I feel like I'm graduating too. My first my first born. I've I've pushed them through adolescence. I mean, I <laughs> childhood and adolescence all the way into um. I, he, he'll say uh, all the way into a grown man. I'm like all the way into a grown boy. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. I mean, you know, you think you, you think at 18 that you're a man, but uh, you, there's a lot of life lessons to come for you in the next 10 years or so. so you're a grown boy till you're about 25. You're, I'll tell you what, the one that feels good, or at least according to my dad, the one that feels the best is when they graduate from college. Because then he's like, because now you're no longer my responsibility. <laughs> That's exactly what my dad said to me. He goes, kid, I love you. You know, congratulations. I'm proud of you. But as of today, you're no longer my responsibility. So, <laughs> 100%. He was scheming on, he's scheming on my place right now. You know what I'm saying? He's like, yo, you keep this joint. And then when I graduate, you move somewhere and I'll move into this joint. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm supposed to pay rent here until you graduate on top yeah. of paying your tuition and room and board. You know what I'm saying? You're like, listen, I brought you into this world. So, that's enough <laughs> right now. Like, you should just be happy. You should be happy you got this far without me asking for exactly. it. Exactly. You're going, you're going to. You're going away to university, so um, there you go right there. We'll figure out the rest after we see what you do with these first couple of weeks. You know, at one point, uh, my son was considering Dell State. I think I may have told you. And yeah, Dell I was at the University of Delaware. We talked about it. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, and Dell State being right across the street from uh, Dover Downs, um, that would have been very interesting, too. He'd have been running a racket out that joint, and then that would have been some trouble. Um, so <laughs> day two of the Masters, uh, Benny, See the, the betting. I don't watch golf enough. I did have some. I did. I, I had some. I had some three balls in yesterday. Mm -hmm. I hit one of them. I had some. Um, some outright first round outrights. I missed all of those. I mean, I put it like this: out of the top twenty, 
I had five of the top 21, but only one in the top 20. Yeah, I hear you. It was um, – this was actually a pretty decent day. I told you I played a bunch of the DFS yesterday for, uh, for the yeah. Masters. A lot of the cheap guys that were written up in the article that we had this week um, actually came through, minus twos, minus threes, so guys that are in, like, the top 10, top 11. So I have – the problem I have is, and this is what always sucks about golf, my best lineup that I have has um, two of the guys that are tied for the lead, um, you know, Kopka and uh, DeChambeau, and then – I think there's Adam Adam Scott on there, and I'm trying to think who the other guys were, but, like, everybody's under par. And then I have Paul Casey, who's, like, one of the more expensive guys on my lineup, like a $9,000 DraftKings guy, and he's, like, plus nine on the day. I'm like, dude, I could have went out there and shot plus nine yesterday. Like, come on, man. Crazy, Benny, plus nine. That's like that. He might be the worst dude in the field right now. He had five bogeys and two double bogeys yesterday. No no birdies. He got off to a bad start. He's going to have to hustle back today. Oh, he, he's got no shot. He's not making a cut. He's basically going to have to shoot like a 62 today to make the cut. Yeah, which is uh, – I guess that's going to be tough to do. See, my, this is what I wanted to ask you about the golf betting. You know how you got top five, top 10, top 20? Mm -hmm. What if you're tied for like top 20? It, it's still – well, it, like if you're – let's say you're one of 10 people that's tied for 10th you still get paid out if it's top 10. Do you, do, you, but, uh, do you get paid out at reduced odds, though? No. Okay, you get paid the full odds. Yeah, yeah you get paid out top 10, yeah, because they made the top 10. You know, there, there's no way for them to tell how many people are going to tie or whatever for that, so. Yeah, no, that, that's what I was figuring. But as somebody, you know, who's uh, dippled and dabbled on the DFS side of, of, of uh, the Masters and some of the major tournaments, mm -hmm. I might know how that go, but as far as betting it, this is the first real time getting into it in that way. And I might uh, see what's going on after we do this today and maybe put a little bit more down on that as you know, but it's getting kind of tough. And I haven't had a winner since the national championship today is Friday, but you know what? And this is what I've been saying all along. Like this is a good point to bring up about sports betting right now and why, you know, all the leagues should really want it. You don't watch golf. I don't even watch golf, but we're watching golf this weekend. A, because it's the Masters, So it's, I mean, basically like the national champion. You know what I mean? This is yeah. one of the biggest events. But at the same point in time, now that we have gambling on it, we're watching it. Like right now in the background, I, I'll even show you guys. I have golf on the TV right now in the background because I got some DFS stuff going on and I got some money on. And because it's, you know, 10, 10 o'clock in the morning and <laughs> how else is there to watch at 10 o'clock in the morning on TV? No doubt. Like, you know, all these other states, like New Jersey has sports betting, right? And you come from New York and you come over here to New Jersey, as do a lot of people that I know. A lot of my friends in New York are always like, yo, I'm going to stop by your house today, hang out for a little while, put some bad. I'm like, yeah, go ahead. Because I live, you know, right outside the tunnel, right right into New Jersey. It's about as close as you can get. So you have you know, basically, basically only just a couple little states right now that are offering sports betting. Can you imagine when there's all 50 states offering sports betting? Like, the amount of money that's going to be bet is going to be ridiculous. It's going to be crazy. And I, did, I had to join on yesterday, too. I'll be honest, I just had it kind of on in the background because I'm, my thing is, is, is like, like, I don't know what, what I'm watching. It's like you'll see somebody shoot a couple shots, then they'll go into a story about his wife. And you'll be like, what? what, what? It's, that's also one of the problems a lot of people have with golf coverage is, you know, they, they do all these like background feel good story kind of things to let you know about the golfers. But at the same point in time, there's also a ton of shots that you're not seeing. Exactly. Like, like you know, you're missing. And especially if you're betting on it, like, you, you know, all the big names, right? Like at this point, I don't want to, I don't want Phil Mickelson's story again. Like if anybody doesn't know Phil Mickelson's story by now, then you know what? You're probably not going to see it because anytime the guy's in contention, they run like a half hour thing about him and you know how he got his nickname and winning finally winning a major and blah 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 you know like i want to watch the actual golf that's going on i want to see the guys making shots i want them to go back and forth between guys that are on the top of the leaderboard so i can see you know how my guys are doing and then show show the shots of some of the guys that maybe aren't even on the leaderboard just to you know to to kill up time instead they do all these like touchy feely feel good pieces and stuff and it's just it's it's a lot, you know what I'm saying? So it was on yesterday. But the best I've actually ever done with the Masters, <clears throat> DFS-wise, I think I may have had like a top five finish. And remember Fantasy Aces? I do remember Fantasy Aces. Yeah. 
So <laughs> the, pro the problem is they still owe me money. Those bastards. I, say, I feel like it's money. I feel like I feel like I have money in the fantasy aces account that is no longer existent. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you know what? You basically use they basically use that money to uh, throw those parties on the boats out. You know when they did those finals. So yeah, no doubt. They 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 had those live finals. I remember that you're right. They had those parties on the boats, yep. and then one year, did one year they had like the party was at like Anaheim Stadium, and you could take batting practice or something like that. Was that a fancy aces thing? It might have been. I, it sounds about right. I know they did that. They used to do. They used to do the boat parties. The one time they rented out like a whole bar and there was like twenty guys. I think for basketball, that actually won it. The one that was at the bar was the one at that one. I forget who was. I remember one. that. That yeah. Tony. Tony Sincata hosted it. I remember that now. Yeah, I forget if it was football or basketball, but that one, like you know, first part. I don't know. It was fifty, a hundred thousand dollars or something like that. Not bad. You know, nice takedown for my man Rad Thad. Yeah. You can find him over on EliteFantasy.com. Rad Thad does a good job with uh with his DFS and his handicap. I was gonna say like the, the, pro the problem with that with Thad though is I don't know if he took all that money out before they went under. So I think he still had a bunch of money on the site. So oh they man, that's a bad look right there. So hopefully he got that uh done. I met the I met the cats. You know what I'm saying? Two cool cats. Is the young boy I can't think of his name and his pops. But um, you know, listen, it, it is Fr Frizenia, Frizen Bri Brian is the one, dude. Yeah, the two brothers. They were two brothers and their dad. So their dad, for anybody out there who plays video games, their dad, I don't know if you knew this either, was the guy who was – he had something to do with Matt, like Madden. So ah, like, yes, they, that's right. I remember that. Yeah, when they were kids, they were like the game – they were like the beta testers for, for Madden every year. Yeah, Trent. I think his name might have been Trent for, for Zezna. Yeah, Trent and Brian. Trent and Brian. Yeah, Trent and Brian. There you go right there. So uh, fantasy aces, you know, not – you know, it, it, listen, it is what it is. It happens. Um, hopefully everybody's doing good. You know what I'm saying? But I think, like I said, I probably wasn't much. It might have been, you know, uh, maybe not even probably a hundred bucks or something like that. But I do remember uh, when times got rough. I'm like, can I cash out a fantasy aces? Oh yeah. I'm like, oh, no, you can't, Corey. That's that's a that's a done deal. You know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> I did have one bet. I put in one bet outside of the Masters yesterday, and I had um, I took the Pittsburgh Pirates money line at all mm -hmm. uh, plus. I think it was plus one fourteen when I hit it. Yep. I had that too. And I didn't really I – didn't, I didn't watch the game at all. You know what I'm saying? I was running around doing some stuff in and out the house, whatever. And I got on Twitter, and I saw your tweet when you said Jose oh, Quintana man. all of a sudden is throwing a gym. And I'm like, I feel like Jose Quintana is pitching against the Pirates. <laughs> no, it, it actually turned into a pitcher's duel. I mean, it was, it was like one nothing or 2 nothing going into the seventh inning. So, like, Musgrove and Quintana both pitched really well. But, I mean – this is what, like, drives me nuts. Like, you see Quintana have these starts, and he does it, like, once a month. Like, every fifth start or so, he goes out there and looks like an ace. Mm -hmm. So, last night, he went seven innings, gave up no runs, had 11 strikeouts, only, like, two or three hits and maybe a couple walks. So, I mean, he threw, he threw a gem. Like, you just ran into a buzzsaw. Yeah. But on the season, the guy had an eight ERA and looked like crap the other times he's been out there on the mound. But if you look at, like, his game log over the last two years – it's basically the same thing. It's like, you know, shit start, decent start, you know, ace-like start. And then the next start he comes back and he gives up like four runs in three innings. So, you know, it's just one of those things with him. He's so tough to – he's just so erratic. He's so tough to nail down. So I never use him in, in DFS. Definitely not in cash games. But, you know, when he, he showed you last night that he does have upside when, he, when things are clicking. I mean – And as far as the other guy goes, Joe Musgrove – Benny, were you were you around the FNTSY days when the BFFs would chant for Joe Musgrove? Probably, I, I think so. They they chanted for a lot of guys, so I wasn't really sure, but yeah, he might have been one of he might have been one of them. Joe Musgrove was a guy they used to chant for a lot, right? And I tell you, I, I don't think he'll mind me telling this story. Uh, at one point, they went and looked up Joe Musgrove, and I I want to I want to make sure it's Joe Musgrove because you know this can be a little bit touchy if it's not. You, no offense to anybody or Joe Musgrove. They looked up Joe Musgrove on Instagram, uh -huh. right? And they came to find out that Joe Musgrove was a very big Donald Trump supporter. And uh -huh. one of the members of the BFS was like, I'm not, I'm not fucking with Joe Musgrove no more. <laughs> if you know the BFS, I don't have to tell you which one. <laughs> yeah, I know who you're talking about. <laughs> that's pretty funny. Yeah, I know. I mean, again, I mean, it is what it is. That's, that's his political leaning. I mean, yeah. you know. If you're from if you're from the middle part of the country, which I think he is, then that makes a lot of sense. I mean, your boy Jason Witten's a big uh, Trump supporter, and you know, 
and I'm a big Jason Witten supporter, you know what I mean? So there you go right there. See, I, with me, with, with stuff like that, um, yeah, son, when it comes to fantasy and betting and, and getting money, I'm kind of like, I don't care. You know what I mean? I don't. Like, I, I say that to people. Even, even when people are like, oh, how could you pick that guy on your fantasy team? He's a child molester, wife beater, whatever, whatever the, you know, whatever the, uh, the guy is and whatever the situation is. I'm like, you know why I pick on him? Because, yeah, you're right. He may uh, beat his kids, but I'm not drafting him to watch my kids. I'm drafting him to score fantasy points to help me win money. So, you know, you, my money is one thing, and my, my thoughts and my views on certain things in life are another, and very, very seldomly do those two things cross. So what ended up happening was um, this is the, the, the best story about this that I've ever, that I've ever heard, and it's a, it's a very good friend of mine. As a matter of fact, I'll be – I'll be uh, talking to him later on today in a couple of hours. When Adrian Peterson got in trouble for the child abuse, yep, this was still a, this was still I wouldn't say he was in his prime, but Adrian Peterson was still a top fantasy back at this time. Yeah, one of the real popular leagues at the Rotor Wide dudes used to do was the, the Stofa 10K league, and I think I don't think it was a 10K entry. I think you could win 10K in the league mm -hmm. and DVR. Our buddy DVR, Derek Van Riper, owned Adrian Peterson in that league. And before the NFL punished Adrian Peterson, he cut him. Derek Van Riper cut him. And I, 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 so I'll never, ever forget that. Because I was like, yo, regardless of what, what you, um, you know, what, what your beliefs are, whatever, how you feel about that, mm. the fact that he was able to do that on a league with that kind of money involved in it, that showed to me that he was really um, serious about that. I actually, actually – Ended up talking to him about it years later. DVR works with kids. Him and his wife at the time worked with kids, or they worked with kids or something like that. Mm -hmm. And that why he was like, yo, I just couldn't support him, so I cut him. See, here's, here's the problem with that to me, right? Like, if you're the Minnesota Vikings at the time who also cut him, I understand that because you're a professional sports franchise who has fifty to 100,000 people buying tickets to your games all the time. Yep. You know, you have media that you have to deal with on a daily basis. The, you know, not just the local media, but like national media and all that. So I understand that. When he's on your fantasy team, like Corey, you and I are boys. I can't name everybody on your fantasy team. Yeah. I'm not going to judge you because you have, you know, a wife beater and a racist and something else on your, on, on your fantasy team. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go stand in front of a microphone in front of a national media audience and explain why you're keeping that racist, that wife beater, that child beater on your fantasy team. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like to me, I see, I look at every, again, I try to take the emotion out of it. I look at it as whether or not, especially before the suspension came down, that's still an asset that somebody is willing to trade for and give you yeah. something for. Dropping Adrian Peterson, you know, somebody else in your league is going to go pick him up. So to me, I mean, Again, if I'm the Minnesota Vikings, it's a different story because I have the whole PR mess to handle. Yeah. But if it's a guy on my fantasy team, I don't give a crap because that guy still has some value in fantasy, and I'm trying to win my fantasy league. I agree with you 100%, Benny. And see, and, and my thing with that has always been, listen, I agree with what you're saying, but as far as with DVR, the fact that he had – he felt that strongly about it. I was like, you know what? I rock with you. Uh -huh. He felt that strongly about it and that you were willing to do that. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I, give, I gave him props for that, but I would never do it. Yeah, I give him credit for it. But, if, again, in my situation, to me, it's like now I'm, now I'm just letting this guy punish me twice. He's punishing me the first time for being a D-bag right. and having me on his team. Now he's punishing me again because I'm giving value to somebody else in my league who, you know, is going to wind up picking him up if I drop him. So, you know, you're not going to get me twice. You being a dick doesn't, doesn't hurt me twice, you know? No, it doesn't, exactly. Speaking of the Jason Witten thing, um. The Nick Bosa story, we didn't get a chance to talk about that. Nick Bosa, probably about to be one of the first three picks of the draft. Mm -hmm. He, now, I, I find it interesting because it's not like somebody went back and dug through Nick Bosa's Twitter account, even though that is a thing nowadays. Right. He came out and said, I deleted a lot of my tweets because I am pro-Donald Trump. I am staunch, staunchly against Colin Kaepernick. I have tweets about that stuff out there. I deleted those tweets, and he said the reason why he deleted those tweets was because it's a good chance he could be drafted by the 49ers, and he doesn't know how that message would fit in a city as liberal as San Francisco. And I'm like, I don't okay. understand 
it's like, you know how you see those memes where it's be like, nobody, you know what I'm saying? Me, you know what I mean? Like, nobody asked you. It didn't bring it up, become a problem. I can see you trying to get in front of it. But listen, your beliefs are your beliefs. Why does that change depending on where you live at geographically? Well, I mean, isn't this the problem with this country right now? You know, is you can act like an asshole when you live in an all-white place in the middle of Ohio and, you know, you, you, can, you can be a jerk-off. You're basically just saying that you understand that you being a racist douchebag is the wrong thing. <laughs> like, if I, go to, if I go to a city where being a racist douchebag isn't okay, it's like where, like, ra- being a racist douchebag shouldn't be okay anywhere. Yeah. You know, like, it shouldn't be okay anywhere. It doesn't matter if you're in the middle of Iowa or if you're in New York City or San Francisco or, you know, one of the quote-unquote liberal places in this country. If you don't have the balls, if you want to be an asshole, if you think, you know, screw Colin Kaepernick and, and all this stuff, and, and I'm pro-Donald Trump, if you're pro-Donald Trump in Ohio, you should be pro-Donald Trump when you're living in California. That's and it. if you're not, then, then you're just proving that, you know, you're, you're an asshole. So you know what, Bosa, you're an asshole. There and you go. Right. What Bosa is, I think Bosa just wanted to get the message out. That's what it was. See, I don't think, nobody, it's like nobody asked him. But he wanted to put it out there, you know what I'm saying? So I, I looked at it and I kind of just like grazed past it and I was like, interesting, but then again, not interesting. But hey, listen, best enough to, to, to Nick Bosa and whatever your beliefs are, I don't think, listen, if you are sacking quarterbacks and running back fumbles and stuff like that, Nick Bosa, they're not going to care who you vote for, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's true. But you know what? Show some character and stand up for what you believe in. You know what I mean? If that's what you believe in, and then ride with it. proudly. Exactly. And ride with it. That's the thing. And that's why I bring into the DVR thing, because no matter um what 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 happens, he was able to ride with that. You know what I mean? But right quick, we got a couple of we got a, we do have a day baseball game. I know um the cats over in uh Guru Elite or Elite Fantasy. I know they probably have something up for DFS baseball today. You can check that out. And also if you want to bet on a couple of these games. They'll have some picks. They don't pick every game, but the cats in there, MLB model, uh, Real Bank, Real, Real Frank Brank, and uh, MLB Dream doing a good job. So if you like to lay it down, whether it be first five, total, size, money line, you like to bet the run line, whatever the case may be, they got you covered. Um, so we do got the Los Angeles Angels and Chicago taking on the Cubs. Um, the Cubs are minus 160 in this one. Tyler Skaggs and Cole Hamels on the man. What do you think about this one, Ben? One thing about me, mm. when it comes to teams like the Cubs, the Red Sox, those real big popular teams, I always bet against them, always. Yeah, I mean, again, you don't have to bet every game, and this is yep. one of those games that I'm not really betting on because, I mean, Tyler Skaggs has had his up and ups and downs. Cole Hamels has been a good pitcher in this league, although he's on the – you look at his numbers over the last couple of years, he's kind of on the decline. So to me, this is just one of those games that I'm kind of staying away from. I don't really have a big lean either way. Um, you know, the Cubs got some decent hitters in their lineup and some bad ones. And, you know, the Angels have Mike Trout and a whole bunch of other guys that, you know, aren't as good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so it's one of those games that I don't really have a big lean. I'm not touching. I don't blame you. Stay away from that one. If you don't like it, you don't have to play it. The Yankees and the White Sox tonight. You got uh, G- Giolito and Jay Happ. I mean, listen, Giolito looked pretty good in, in some of his starts this year. Last year, though, he was horrendous. And, again, the guy has been in, like a top prospect that's been bouncing around from organization to organization. You know, he was one of the key pieces in the trade for, uh, you know, the trade that came over between Washington. I think it was for um, the Adam Eaton trade. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, Giolito is a guy who a lot of people thought was going to be a big-time pitcher. He didn't really show it last year. He started to this year, but – I'm not really sold on it. I, I would bet the Yankees, but, again, this is another one of those games that I'm not really on. See, my problem with betting the Yankees right now is you're not getting – 35. Yeah, you're not getting the – and you're not getting, like, the Yankees at full strength, right? I mean, you got injuries throughout that lineup, and, and people need to adjust for that stuff. And, really, the lines haven't adjusted for it. So, for me, I'm just – I'm not chasing the Yankees until they get back to – you know, full strength with all those bats back in their lineup. If I'm doing anything with the Yankees, like I said, I'm a Yankee fan, so I'm, ne- I'm not really – I don't mind betting against them now. But um, if I, if, I, if I got the game on and I want to watch and have some action, I'll just bet a prop bet for one of the cats to hit a home run, likely Gary Sanchez. Yeah, like Sanchez or Judge, like plus four or 500 to hit a home run, something like that. Like, that's what I'm saying. It's like if you're, if you're looking to, to make money on this game, I, I don't really think it's the way to go. Like, I'm not looking to bet the Yankees really – until we get about two months from now and you get Stanton back in the lineup, you get everybody healthy. Because right now it's just like the top of the order is the five or six guys who you expect. 
the bottom of the order, though, is just basically like free agent pickups, you know? No doubt about it. Uh, later on tonight, you got the Mets are in A-Town to take on the Braves. Uh, they're in Atlanta. Zach Wheeler and uh, uh, Wright, K. Wright. I don't even know who K. Wright is. Is it um, Kevin? To be honest, I'm not even sure. I didn't, I didn't get that deep looking at that game. But What's up with Zach Wheeler, though? He's supposed to be ready to, like, really do his thing this year is what I'm hearing from Met fans. But I always hear crazy stuff from Met fans. Met fans are always happy in April. But I, but I will say this, though. This is, not, this is not a crazy thing. I mean, Mets fans do say some crazy stuff. This one's not crazy. Like, Wheeler really had a good season last year, kind of burst onto the scene. So they're expecting big things out of him up there at the top of that rotation. I mean, you have, you have DeGrom, you have Syndergaard, you have Wheeler. Like, that's three legit pitchers that if you can make it to the playoffs, those are three guys that are going to be tough, you know, on another team having to see those guys three times each in a series. So hopefully he can stay healthy this year, which has been his problem earlier in his career. But, again, he stayed healthy last year, and, and he really kind of took a step forward. So kind of expecting to see the same thing from him. Yep, no doubt about that. So if you want to lay down on some baseball, once again, don't forget DFSEliteFantasy.com if you want to bet it. Guru Elite, the betting package, lay it down for MLB as the season gets ready to get started and warmed up. Well, the season already started, but it's getting warmed up now. Cats is hopping in. A lot of bets coming on baseball. I'm seeing some handles or some baseball bets, you know, on the app that I'm using. Got to have seven, 8,000 bets on one game. And I'm like, okay, well, baseball is starting to heat up now. Um, MMA, it's, it's an event going on this weekend. They got you covered. Uh, for the DFS and for the betting over at EliteFantasy.com. I'm not the biggest MMA guy, but every time I get um, – somebody will tell me, you know, parlay these guys right here. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, you're parlaying all of these favorites. All of these guys got to come through, you know what I mean? And I, and I really don't like playing like that, especially with a sport that I don't know. So here's basically the way that I do it, right? Like, you know, we got one of the best here at, at Guru. And I'm not just saying that. Like, anybody in the industry will tell you, like, Mad Lab is one of the best at breaking down all these fights. So I've kind of gotten good at reading Mad Lab's article and understanding who to bet on based on his article, right? Okay. So when you're reading his article, here's the, the key thing to watch for. When he makes a good case for both fighters, that's a fight I stay away from. Because mm -hmm. he's basically like, he's gonna, he always is going to tell you who he thinks is going to win. But he, he breaks down both sides of the fight. So when he says, like, you know, fighter A and fighter B, you know, like fighter A's got the better hands, the better ground game, he should win this fight. But if fighter B can make it, a you know, an ugly fight where he takes it to the ground and, you know, then he can grapple and wrestle with him, you know, he's got a chance to submit him. So if it goes the distance, fighter A wins. But, you know, fighter B has a chance to win this fight as well. Those are the ones you stay away from. Then there'll be another fight where he's like, you know, like – Two girls are fighting. He'll be like, listen, she's got the better ground game. She's got the better, you know, stand-up game. You know, she's better at submission, and she's got a better chin, better cardio. Like, when he basically makes the case that literally it would take a miracle for the other one to win, those are the ones you want to bet on. And, you know, you made a good point here, too. Like, one of the things that is profitable in MMA, you don't want to take, like, a minus 300, minus 400 favorite yeah. and just bet, like, 100 bucks or 1,000 bucks on them to win. Because you're not winning any money. You're winning like, you know, 25 Winning your money back. Yeah, you're winning like 25 30% of your bet. But if you can take like two guys that are like minus 250 and put them together or like two or three guys that are minus 250, minus 300, that, that Mad Lab was like, yo, these are guys that honestly would take an act of God for them to lose. <laughs> now, now, now you're getting like, you know, bet 100 to win, you know, uh, 125. So you get back like 225 or something. Once you can get it to even money or close to even money, that's when I, that's when I like to take them. So I do, I do tend to do what you were saying and link a couple of the stars together like that. Because the other fights, if it's like minus 120 or minus, you know, plus 125, like you could just pick a winner there. You could just put 100 bucks straight on one of those guys to win the fight and then kind of go from there. And there's been days where Mad Labs hit like 8 out of 10 or 8 out of 11 on these where, you know, if you just avoid some of the ones that are a little risky, you can go like – you know, it's like blackjack, right? You make 100 on this hand, and now you got 220. You bet 220 on the next hand. Now you got 400. You bet 400 on the next one. Now you got 800. So, I mean, you could turn 100 bucks into 1,000 bucks pretty quick in MMA, and the fights come every 15, 20 minutes. And, you know, I like action. So, anytime I can get more action quick, I'm always down to bet on it. Hey, Benny, you be betting those first innings? I stay away from the first. You guys are fucking crazy with that shit, man. I'll bet, I'll bet baseball games all day long, but I'm betting on outcomes, right? Like, I'm looking, at, I'm looking at bullpens. I'm looking at starters. I'm looking at lineups. Like, I'm betting outcomes. 
first inning, I mean, first inning, anything can happen, you know? Like, to me, that's like, you know, let's go roll some dice or something, or let's go play roulette if we're doing that. Like, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah those I'm first guys are crazy for that. The, the race to 15 for basketball, the race to 15, the first team to score 15 points, the first inning best, that's betting on heroin right there. Yeah. That's, like, <laughs> that's, it's, that's gambling. Like, listen, yeah. I, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not somebody who's like, oh, DFS isn't gambling or, you know, like, you know, sports yeah. betting isn't gambling if you always win. Like, there's, there's always risk to it. But the way that I look at it is I always want to try to put my money in the best spots, right? Like, I'm, I'm doing research that tells me this is more likely to happen than the odds that I'm getting on it. And that's really what it comes down to is, like, if something's more likely to happen than the odds that you're getting on it, it's a good bet. If it's less likely to happen than the odds that you're getting on it, it's not a good bet. I mean, that's the, the, when you break down sports betting, that's simply what it is. This stuff to me is like rolling the dice. Like if you want to gamble and you want some action, if you want to throw like 10, 20 bucks on it just to, you know, just to have something to do while you're watching a game, I'm good oh, with it. Yeah. If you're making big bets on, you know, you're betting a couple hundred bucks on first innings and yeah. at first to 15 and stuff like that, you're crazy. In my you're opinion. losing. It's, it's like, like, like you said, if you want to have some action and throw a little something down, I'm fine with that. But if you're in, if you're betting as an investment strategy like I am, you don't ever touch no shit like that. You know what I mean? It makes absolutely no sense. No. Size, totals, first half, stuff like that. I agree with you 100%. So if you want to get down with some MLB, Elite Fantasy is the place to do it. And the same thing goes for MMA. It got you covered no matter what the sport is. Speaking of those parlays, Benny, that you talk about, here's a five-team parlay that I put together last night for NBA. This is for first round series. 76ers, Raptors, Nuggets, Celtics, and Rockets. If you parlay those five teams and win their series, that is plus 350 right now. So who was it again? It was 76ers. 76ers, the Raptors. The Raptors. Raptors is a lock. Go ahead. The Nuggets. Nuggets is pretty much a lock. Go ahead. The Celtics. I'll put them in the, the shady, but you know how I feel about that after yesterday. Yeah, I think they're a lock, too. And the Rockets. And the Rockets are another one. I'll put that in the maybe because you yeah. a decent team. And, and I, I agree with I, you. I feel strongly about right that, too. Probably is the Celtics, but I don't think Indiana has enough. But those five teams right there to win their first-round series pays uh, plus 350. I like it. So let me give you a good stat. Like I told you yesterday, after we got off the show, all I did basically was look at NBA stats and, and stuff for betting. In the last month of the season, the Indiana Pacers were 11-1 and against teams that had a losing record, teams that didn't make the playoffs. Against teams that made the playoffs, they were like 5-13. and Yeah. So, and, and we talked about this earlier in the season, too. It was like Indiana's that team that they're good, but without Oladipo, they can't be great. They beat the teams they're supposed to beat. They don't lose to, you know, the Atlanta Hawks and the Dallas Mavericks of the league. But they're also not going in there and consistently beating the – Milwaukee Bucks, the 76ers, the, you know, the Celtics, the, um, you know, who am I missing? The Toronto Raptors. Like, they're not beating the other good teams. They're beating up on the bad teams they're supposed to beat, and that's how they built their, their really good record. But they're well under 500 against teams that have made the playoffs and a good team. So, I, I, I'm telling you, I love – I said to you yesterday, the Celtics are one of those teams that I absolutely love. Like, I feel people are right. underestimating in this – at least in this round and in this matchup. Yeah, as they move on, can they beat – Milwaukee, I don't, I don't think That's so. That's what it is right there. Can they beat the Bucks? We'll see what happens when they get to that series. Before we get up out of here, Benny, I want right. to, we got some quick totals uh, came in last night for some of these uh, first for some of these Saturday and Sunday basketball games. Have you seen them yet? No, I haven't. So this will be good. 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 Uh, so I want you to guess what you think it would be. Orlando and Toronto. What would you think the total would be? Two twenty-two. It's at two fifteen. I mean, that's pretty low. They're two good defensive teams, but I think that's pretty low. I like the over there. I think I like the over in this one, too. I agree with you on that one. Uh, uh, the, the Clippers and the Warriors. That's going to be high, man. That's a 230-something total. That's 234. 232. Opened okay. up at 230 and a half, sits at 232. I feel like 232 is right on the number. Yeah, that's good. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to go either side of that. There's going to be 230 point, 230 points in that game easy. Yep. Uh, Denver and San Antonio. That one's going to be low. I'm going to say that one's a 215-ish one, too. 211. Okay. I, I, and I don't think that's crazy. That's fine. I, don't, I wouldn't go over under that. I, I think I would leave that one alone also. That, 
That one's right on the number. What I will say is I don't think this game goes to overtime, so I don't think there's a chance that overtime pushes it over the number. Mm-hmm. I think the under could come in. I probably would stay away. I would more than likely. If I put some action on this game, the last game tomorrow night, I would lay the five and a half with the Nuggets. I don't want to spend the whole playoffs uh, laying for the, the least favorites, though. So you got to find your spots. On Sunday, Boston and Indiana. That'll be a low total, too. That's probably like a 215 again. Opened up at 209 and pushed up to 211. No Marcus Smart. I Yeah, pushed up. The t- I wish I would have got it at 209. I would have taken that. If you told me under 210, I would have taken the over. I, I mean, again, it's still. I still think it's a little bit of a low number, but not too bad. I don't know if the Pacers can score 100 points. I th- but I think the Celtics – I mean, again, the Pacers are the third in defensive efficiency in the league. The, Celt- the Celtics defensive efficiency dropped a little bit this season, but, I mean, they're still up there towards the top of the league too. So, yeah, it really comes down to how many points you think the other teams can score on the other side. Listen, here's the thing. I mean, all season long, because of the change in the shot clock, the totals have been higher. You know, we've been seeing, like, the, the low totals, like 210, 211, and a lot of times they were going over. And we saw totals 230, 240 routinely this year. Like, 220 was kind of the new norm. Last year, the norm was probably around, like, 215, 218. So I'm always looking to go higher. You know, these are lower totals than we saw in most of the season. So maybe I, the, 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 game, the, the games get more intense. Every person yeah. yeah. This one right here, Oklahoma City and Portland, 225. I'm taking the over on this one, Benny, because this game right here could very well go to overtime. Well, it could go to overtime, not even that. When when you take Nurkic out the middle and replace him with Enos Kanter, you know, one of the big differences between their two games is like Nurkic is a very solid anchor defender. You know, like he's a guy that's going to rebound, block, block and or change shots at the rim. And his Cantor has never been considered a decent defensive player. As a matter of fact, he's always been considered a liability, um, you know, when, he, when he's there on, on defense. So, to me, I would, I would have no problem taking the over in this game. I think there's going to be a lot of points. Yeah, I think so, too. I agree with you on that one. Uh, Detroit and Milwaukee comes in at 219 and a half. I would say under on this one because Detroit can't score 100 points, but Milwaukee might score 150 on them. Right. Here's my big thing is, you know, it's the first round of – it's the first game of the first round of the NBA playoffs, and you're the number one seed in the East. They're going to drag them. Chance to make a run. One of the things that we've noticed about Milwaukee all year, Milwaukee goes up 20, Giannis is on the bench, the other starters are on the bench. You know, again, their backups can still put up points, so it's not like they can't. But, yeah, I agree. I mean, I don't think this game's going to be close. So, in order for it to get over that total, it's going to have to be like 120 to 90-something. Yeah. And I don't know if it gets there. Like, I, I have 115 uh, to 88. I think that's fine. Like, I'd be willing to go under on this one. Yeah, I think it's the under. I think the under is in play on this one also. Only thing is, is that Milwaukee, just like I said, just slammed them to the point where there's no mercy and the Pistons just quit and the Bucks put up 170 points. Um, Utah and Houston ends the weekend. Two Opens up at 219, pushes down to 217. Over. Easy, huh? Oh, I, I'm, I'm not even going to consider it not being an over. Listen, the one thing that's changed a lot that people still aren't adjusting for this year with the Utah Jazz is their pace. Like, mm-hmm. used to be the, them, and the, them and, the, and the Memphis Grizzlies used to be, like, the slowest paced teams in the league by a wide margin. Now Utah's, like, mid-pack. It's not like they're playing, like, breakneck speed, but they're mid-pack. There's a big difference between being one of the slowest paced teams in the league and being mid-pack. And then on top of that, you look at Houston – Houston is one of the most efficient offensive teams in the league. Again, they don't play at a super fast pace either, but they don't waste possessions. They get points on most of their possessions. As a matter of fact, I think they're like one of the top three or four in offensive efficiency. So even with less possessions, they're still one of those teams that takes advantage of them better than anybody else. So to me, this is definitely an over. I agree with Benny 100% on that one. So there you go right there. Got you wrapped up. Make sure you have a good betting weekend. You need an extra hand. So head on over to Elite Fantasy and GuruElite.com and get that extra hand. Next week, I think we'll have Russell Clay and Night Ghost come on, talk some NFL draft, get some hockey in our system too. You know what I mean? As people get ready for those playoffs. One thing about the hockey playoffs, I can't take those one nothing games. That going to double overtime. That's a little bit too much for my ticker, Benny. But it would be good to get some guys to come in here next week. My man Knight goes to help break us down if he gets the time and the opportunity. Benny, my big piece of chicken. Today's my father's birthday. I got to give the big chicken, the big piece of chicken to the big dog because he's been getting the big piece of chicken <laughs> since I know him. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you know what? And he deserves it. So that's a good thing right there, too. 
Mine, mine is actually going to go to uh, a guy named Bryson DeChambeau because he's ah, one, of the, one of the few golfers that I actually had a little bit of money on yesterday. And he's also on my, uh, my DK teams. And on top of it, he's leading one of tied for the lead with the Masters right now at uh, minus six. And in the Millie Maker, he's only 6% owned. So I need that guy to win because that could give me a shot at making some decent money. Let's go, Bryce, and go get that money for Benny. Listen, thanks for rocking with us all week. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to go check out EliteFantasy.com and Guru Elite for your DF, uh, for your betting and your DFS. For my man, man, Benny Ricciardi, I'm Corey Parson, the fantasy executive. We out to y'all on Monday. Good luck this weekend.